Hey Aries, it's Dana with Deep Thoughts with Dana. And this is a reading for you for, you know, December-ish, right? There is no time in the tarot. Um, there is no time in spirituality. So whenever this resonates to whenever it doesn't is the time frame for you. You may see yourself any, anywhere in this reading. You may be in the throes of it. You may be in the middle of it, right? You might be in the middle of this reading. This reading could have happened for you years ago. This reading could be about to unfold in your life. It just all depends on your own personal journey, right? Because as a general tarot card reading, instead of the who, what, when, where, and why, how of a personal reading, I am sequestered to the maybes, ifs, ands, and buts of a general reading. So, um, wherever you see yourself, it's, you know, it's just, it's just is what it is, right? If you would like more guidance, clarification, understanding, confirmation of anything that's about to unfold in this reading, please reach out and have your tarot cards read by somebody that you trust. Have your own journey explained to you in, um, in the energy of the tarot. My link is in the box below, Deep Thoughts with Dana dot com is how you can hit me up. Um, super easy to schedule. So if you'd like me to read your cards, please reach out. So Aries, what I have done is something a little bit different. See, normally I lay out the 15 cards and then we have a center, a card in the center. Well, this time I have replaced the center card with one of these cards. I picked these up about, I don't know, about two weeks ago. They're the numerology guidance cards. And if y'all know anything about me, I am a huge advocate of numerology. Numer there would be no tarot without numerology. I want y'all to understand that tarot is rooted in numerology. So love these cards. And this is now replacing your center card, at least for this spread. Um, your center card in this reading is card number 27. It's called spiritual partnership. That's what's going on here, right? Spiritual partnership. I want to point out that if we add the two in the seven, we get a nine, right? Nine is the number of, and I have my, my numerology cheat sheet right here. Nine is the number of fruition, attainment, conclusion, completion, and fulfillment. I've had some comments that say nine isn't the number of completion, but it is. Nine is the nth degree from the 10, right? 10 is the completion with renewal, right? The completion where you, you start from that pedestal, right? You go all through it, you complete, and then you start anew based on what it is that you're bringing with you, right? Nines are completion as in, I have done everything that needs to be done to bring this situation to a fruition. But anyway, so card number 27, spiritual partnership. That is in the center of your reading. That's what this entire reading revolves around. So let's go to, uh, you know what? I lost my, lost my place when I showed you guys. Okay, here we go. Spiritual partnership, okay? Okay, this card indicates a time when a significant spiritual relationship is about to be forged. Perhaps it comes in the form of a friendship between like-minded souls on a similar journey towards enlightenment. Or maybe it's a master-discipline relation, disciple, master-disciple relationship where an important individual enters your life. The saying goes, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And when yours arrives, he or she will assist you in expanding your spiritual growth. During the course of this relationship, you will play both the role of the teacher and the student, and the wisdom gained from this experience will enhance your connection to source. Perhaps a spiritually minded person will broaden your understanding of the divine. Maybe you become a catalyst in another, sp in another spiritual journey and help that individual on his or her path. Regardless of the form of this spiritual relationship, it will serve your greater good. In order to improve your current situation, you're being asked to adjust to and harmonize with the natural rhythm and cycles of your life, cycles that are leading you toward a significant spiritual relationship. So pay attention to the speakers, teachers, and authors whose teachings you respect. Be on the lookout for people on a similar journey to your own. Embrace the opportunity to enhance your spiritual growth. That is the center of this reading, Aries, the very, the very core of what this reading is about. Now let's get into it. Let's read about you, Aries. Let's read about you. So the first card out of the box is the Six of Cups. 
Reuniting with someone from your past, reconciling differences with someone from your past, family, home, memories, nostalgia. Clarified by the Six of Swords, there was a regretful but necessary transition away from your past in the past. Okay, there was a regretful but necessary transition. And now what's on your mind is either reuniting or reconciling or both. You can reunite and reconcile or you can reunite or reconcile differences with someone from your past. That's what's on your mind, Aries, right? Princess of Swords in reverse. All talk, no action, undelivered promises to the page of wands in reverse. This is um, a lack of motivation, right? Just, just a lack of motivation, a lack of exploration and discovery. So what this is telling me is that in the past, there were undelivered promises, which resulted in the energy of a thanks but no thanks kind of, kind of, kind of communication, a thanks, but no thanks. There were undelivered promises, which is the differences that you desire to reconcile. There were undelivered promises that caused a regretful but necessary transition out of this relationship because of undelivered promises that created frustration, delays, and a, and a lack of, of desire to, to continue. The Ten of Cups, happiness, values alignment, success in a relationship. The 10 is completion, right? Remember, I said earlier, the, the completion with the number 10 is taking everything that you've done up until now and then launching off of that completion with everything that you have in your, in your, in your holster behind you, okay? So this 10 of cups, that was the purpose of this relationship. Perhaps it was a 10 of cups relationship at some point. But 10 of cups, this happiness, this values alignment, this stability, this, this, this kind of relationship that we all strive for in our lives was, okay? It was, but it turned into some kind of lack of collaboration, some kind of lack of teamwork. The Three of Pentacles in reverse is also about a disregard for skills. This is somebody not taking somebody else's contribution um, as beneficial, okay? A disregard for skills. So there was the Ten of Cups, right? There was a good, solid, unified, harmonious, happy relationship. And then suddenly there wasn't. There was a lack of teamwork a lack of collaboration, a disregard for skills somehow, some way that caused the regretful but necessary transition. Undelivered promises. Somebody didn't deliver on their Ten of Cups promise, right? Somebody didn't deliver and it created a disregard for skills, a lack of collaboration. Nine of Wands comes in, talks about being defensive and hesitant. Defensive and hesitant. Um the whole situation, the lack of teamwork and collaboration caused you to be defensive and hesitant. Hence, the regretful but necessary transition. The Prince of Swords comes in, and this is interesting to me. This Prince of Swords in reverse comes in. This is a disregard for consequences. What this card is saying to me is that is that regardless of what may come, regardless of how the situation may actually work out, you are going to move forward with some kind of communication because you don't care about the consequences. You don't have anything with this person now. So what does it matter if they reject you or not? You're going to move forward with a, disre a, disre a disregard for consequences to the tower because you've had a personal transformation. Personal transformation. The Queen of Pentacles in reverse. 
this card is, this card represents the person, hold on, this card represents this card, okay? Whoever it was that you want to reunite and reconcile with from the past used to hold position in your life. See, the Queen of Pentacles is somebody who holds position. They hold title, okay? Their car is parked in the garage. Their socks are on the floor. The Wi-Fi password is theirs, okay? The Queen of Pentacles holds title in somebody's life. In reverse, this Queen of Pentacles does not hold title in your life anymore, okay? The same Queen of Pentacles is this person that you want to either reunite, reconcile, or both with from your past, okay? So there's a disregard for consequences. You're like, fuck it. What do, what do I have to lose? What do I have to lose? Besides maybe a little hit to the ego, what do I have to lose, right? Because you've had a personal transformation to the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. You've had a personal transformation about this person who used to hold title in your life, but doesn't anymore. Understand? To the Wheel of Fortune, a turning point. Because of this... Because of this turning point in your feelings, Aries, you are energetically creating a turning point in the situation. Now, this is major arcana. You can't control this turning point. But because you have had an energetic shift in your consciousness, now source is presenting you with a turning point. What you do with it is up to you, but there is about to be some kind of massive turning point in your life in this relationship. What's Aries want to do with this turning point? Well, Aries wants to engage with the Eight Pentacles. Aries wants to work on it. Aries wants to gain mastery of it, right? Aries wants to fix whatever needs to be reconciled. Aries wants to fix it with the Eight of Pentacles. Clarified by the Nine of Cups. This is wishes fulfilled. Comfort, happiness, satisfaction. You see the repair of this relationship as being extremely fulfilling to you, Aries. To the Six of Pentacles. Wanting to give and receive and share equally on a daily basis with this person. You want this person back in your life, Aries, and you are going to you're going to go forward with a disregard for consequences because you have created a turning point. You have had a personal transformation about how you think about this situation, about how you feel about this Queen of Pentacles person, and <coughs> Your personal transformation has created a turning point. Aries wants to work on it. They want to engage. They see it as wishes fulfilled. And they want to give and receive with this person on the regular. Lovers in reverse. This misalignment of values. This broken, significant relationship in your life where there was a lack of motivation, where there was frustration in the past to the seven of wands in reverse. This, this thing that you gave up on, right? This, this, this relationship that you gave up on. This could be family. This could be work. This could be friends. Whatever it is, it's a significant relationship in your life that went south. And Aries is now trying to recover and um, rejuvenate this relationship. The center of your reading, spiritual partnership, is about to be formed here. Some kind of spiritual partnership. You have a spiritual connection to this person, Aries, and you're not willing to just let it just, just never happen again. You want to resurrect it. There is an end to your inflexibility, inner strength. There's an end to your inflexibility because you have, you have tapped into some raw power, some inner strength that you have on the inside that, that just 
resonates the connection that you have to this person. You have some kind of extremely strong bond with this person. And the Five of Swords in reverse talks about past resentment and being open to change, right? Inner strength is needed because there is some past resentment with this person. There is. There is some past resentment with this person, but you're open to changing it now because you want to reach out. You want to engage. You want to work on it. You are concerned, though, that this whole situation is hopeless with the Nine of Swords in reverse to the Seven of Swords because there was a lot of bullshit that went down between the two of you. Whoever is at fault, it doesn't matter. But there was a lot of bullshit that went down between the two of you. Look, I'm trying to grow my bangs out and they're driving me crazy. I apologize. Lots of bullshit went down and you think the whole situation might just be hopeless. You're just, you're just not sure. Just not sure how they are going to receive you. Look, Ace of Wands in reverse. A lack of clarity, right? You don't have a lack of a lot of clarity about how this person is going to receive you when you approach them. Ten of Pentacles in reverse. Loss and loneliness. Because this regretful but necessary transition in the first card up here created a lot of loss and loneliness for you, for them, for this situation. And now with the Empress in reverse, there is nothing being created. I even get the feeling you haven't even spoken to this person for a long time. There is nothing being created. But you see, this Empress, this Empress just reiterates the whole spiritual connection here. The Empress is the connection between the erythrial, between the spiritual and the terra firma, the earth, okay? She is a spiritual being. She truly is. She's card number three in the major arcana, the magician manifesting, the high priestess, the higher power, and then you have the empress, right? She's the creation of life. This empress is the person that you are separated from right now, okay? This represents the spiritual connection. When we put her in the reverse, like she showed up in this, in this reading, when we put her in the reverse, this is a lack of creation. No creation happening. But this card is also about dependence on others. See, Aries, there is something about this connection that you need. There's something about this connection that you really, really need. And you, you, you feel determined to explore this connection because it feeds something, some kind of spiritual something in you, Aries, that um, you can't quite find any place else. It feeds something in you, Aries, that, that you have to explore. You are compelled to explore it. The Queen of Wands. This is representing success and achievement. This is a dual purpose card, okay? This Queen of Wands represents you, Aries. It represents your determination. It represents your, your quest for success and achievement in this situation. Actually, it's not dual purpose. I take that back. This is you, Aries. This is you in your desire to achieve and succeed. This represents your desire to have completion, accomplishment, and success as you move forward towards this person from your past. To the Six of Wands, victory, progress, success. That's what's on your mind. Self-confidence. That's what's on your mind, Aries. To the Star, Hope, faith, purpose, and renewal. That is what you are determined to accomplish in this situation. Determined to accomplish it. But what's this about? What's this about? Hangman in reverse. Resistance. Clarified by the hangman in reverse. Stalling. 
to the King of Cups in reverse, emotional volatility. So what this tells me is that up to this point, Aries, you have been resistant. You have been stalling because you have been in a state of emotional volatility, emotional insecurity. Um, don't know. Whatever happened between the two of you, there was some kind of rejection of love. There was some kind of rejection of, like I said, the Ten of Cups, right? There's some kind of emotional volatility that has kept you resistant, that has created and kept delays because there is emotional volatility for you, Aries. Maybe it's on their side. It just depends. It's your journey, right? I don't know. But you've been de de delaying and resisting because of emotional volatility. The World Cup comes in. The World Cup. <laughs> Talking about soccer, huh? The World Card in reverse comes in. This talks about um, healing. It talks about um, personal closure. Okay? Personal healing. Personal closure. This is you coming to terms with this personal transformation that you had up here in the tower. It's you coming to terms with the fact that if you are ever going to move forward, if you're ever going to have success, if you're ever going to have victory and progress and renewal and hope and faith in this relationship, that you have to have personal closure to the emotional volatility that is associated with whatever this regretful but necessary transition was. You have to have closure. And you are. <coughs> Excuse me, Aries. You are. You're having closure in this situation. <coughs> the high priestess. Withdrawn. Disconnected. Okay? withdrawn and disconnected and that's what you're bringing the closure to you are turning this withdrawn and disconnection into intuition into intuition your subconscious mind hold on aries i have to cough hold on good grief sorry aries so you're turning this from the reverse into the upright right in reverse this is about being withdrawn, being disconnected, disconnected from your intuition. And as you begin to heal from this, as you begin to move into this turning point in this relationship, you turn it into the upright, your subconscious mind, your intuition, following the call, following the call to the King of Pentacles. This King of Pentacles represents, <coughs> represents one of a couple things. This King of Pentacles represents your desire to succeed, your desire to have control of the situation, your desire to have security, ambitions, long-term goals. The King of Pentacles is husband material, okay? So this is either you desiring to be this to this person, or this is you desiring this person to be this to you. Or this is simply your energy of wanting control and stability in the situation. To the Princess of Pentacles. You're manifesting this. You are absolutely, positively manifesting this in your life. You are making moves, Aries. Five of Wands in reverse, an increased focus on your goals. You're making moves, Aries, to the Six of Pentacles, wanting to give and receive and share. You don't want this to be one-sided. You want this to be unanimous, right? You want this to be a, 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 a congruent lifestyle with this person of giving and receiving. Prince of Pentacles in reverse, stuck to the eight of wands when it comes to communication, but you're stuck, Aries. You're stuck when it comes to this energetic shift, to this change, to communicating everything that we just talked about to this person. You're stuck. Why are you stuck? To the eight of swords, the 10 of swords in reverse, and the four of swords in reverse. Why are you stuck? 
Well, you're wrapped up in the mental prison of the Eight of Swords. Eights are about change, movement, action. You're wrapped up in your head about how exactly you are going to go about um, creating this reunion in your life. How exactly are you going to go about this? To the Ten of Swords in reverse, how are you going to regenerate, recover this entire situation? How, how, how are you going to do this? To the Four of Swords in reverse, that's what you keep asking yourself. This is mentally restless. This is thinking hard about how it is you are going to communicate your desire to have an energetic shift in this relationship to this person. King of Pentacles. Again, the King of Pentacles. Long-term vision. Long-term goals. Ambitions. Aspirations. Security. Control. Bossing up with the King of Pentacles. Bossing up to the Queen of Cups. Because you have some feels, Aries. You have some feels and you want to bring these feels to this person. And you're hoping that this person has the same feels as you do. Death in reverse. Hold on. Okay. Death in reverse. A personal transformation. Okay, so you're coming out of all of this, the delays, the resisting. You are, you are having an epiphany as to how it is that you are going to go about um, reconnecting with this person that you have a very spiritual connection with. Personal transformation. Five of Wands in reverse. An increased focus on your goals. The three of wands in reverse. This is a lack of foresight, right? So the increased focus on your goals is the lack of foresight, right? Because that's what's holding you back here is the lack of foresight. You don't know how this person is going to receive you. You don't know if this person is going to slam the door in your face or give you a hug right? You just don't know. You have a lack of foresight. You just, you just don't know. So you have an increased focus on your goals, but you have a lack of foresight as to how you're going to accomplish it. But you do have a personal transformation happening here because what you want is the Ace of Pentacles. What you want is the manifestation of a brand new opportunity with this person. To the Ace of Swords and out of out of this personal transformation with the death card, you come to absolute mental clarity about what you want to do and how you want to handle this situation. What is that clarity? The, the, the night of fire, right? The night of wands. You are going to take inspired action, Aries. You are going to take inspired action to the alchemist to manifest this into your life. What? The queen of pentacles. Remember, a while ago, the Queen of Pentacles was um, in reverse up here, right? This person who used to hold title in your life but doesn't anymore, you're going to manifest that person back into your life, okay? You are absolutely hell-bent on manifesting this person into your life. <coughs> and when Aries puts their mind to something, stand back. Just stand back because there's no stopping you, Okay? And I believe, Aries, that that is the energy that you need to have in this because there's a lot of self-doubt, right? There's a lot of self-doubt because of some bullshit that happened in the past. But Aries, you have a very spiritual connection to this person. And, and so much so that you're, that despite all the bullshit that happened in the past, despite the hopelessness, you are going to reach out again to this person and you are going to manifest this person, this queen of pentacles back into your life. You are Aries. You are. That's, that's what you're going to do. Conclusion. Harmony. This is another Oracle deck that I got and I love, okay? So Harmony, this is from the Psychic Tarot, okay? Harmony is card number six. Card number six says, this card signifies the possibility that a deep spiritual initiation, partnership, or union is taking place at this time or is manifesting for the future. 
This doesn't always necessarily represent a love affair of the heart, but could signify other forms of relationships in your life, whether they're personal or business related. Remember, not all partnerships have to be one-to-one. -one. They can be forged with a group, an organization, a pet, or even an incident or a situation. The Harmony card is calling to let you know that it's time for you to make choices in certain relationships. The, the bonds you form with others are really about you, even in the most difficult situations. They're meant to be mirrors for you, always reflecting back what you need to see. Ask yourself, what am I learning from this relationship? What new qualities am I developing? Is this partnership for my highest good? How can I make it stronger? Are we teaching each other? What have I discovered or am, or am still uncovering about myself through this union? Are the people in my life empowering and encouraging me to be all that I can? Within every relationship, there's an encoded lesson that you've hopefully gleaned or, in some cases, one that you still need to learn. The traditional tarot archetype is the lover's. There you go, Aries. It's a beautiful reading. And I wish you the very, very best of luck with this. Aries, if there's one thing that I have learned in my life, and maybe it will help you somehow, some way, is that um, it's all about risk. It's all about risk. If there is something that is significantly important to you, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Risk it. Risk it. Because the biggest reward comes with the biggest risk, right? Risk it, Aries. If this is that important to you, put all your insecurities down. Put your insecurities down. Put your ego down. Put it all down and reach out to this person, this, this situation, these people. Reach out and, and go to bed knowing that you have done all that you possibly can, everything in your power to bring this to fruition. And if it doesn't make, then you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it just simply was not meant to be. There you go, Aries. If you'd like a personal reading with me, you can reach me at deepthoughtswithdana.com. Namaste.